Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at radians, specifically looking at how to use them to work with arcs and sectors. I'm going to show you first what a radian is and how to convert between degrees and radians and then how to use them to find the area of a sector and the length of an arc. I'm then going to work through three exam style questions. As ever, please do grab a pen and paper and work through this at your own pace. Pause the video and rewind or fast forward as you need. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. You're going to have to excuse my wobbly circles in this video. I'm not brilliant at drawing them, but I'll try my best. Um, so a radian is when you take a radius of a circle, and if you imagine you pick that up and place it along the circumference, so that red length there is the radius, again, placed along the circumference, then that um, angle you would turn through there would be one radian. Now we know that the full circumference is pi times the diameter, or 2 pi r. So the full length around here is 2 pi r. Now to work out how many of these would fit around the full circumference, then we could do 2 pi r divided by the length, which is r, and that gives us 2 pi. So what that tells us is there's 2 pi lots of radians in a full turn of a circle. So 2 pi radians is the same as what we would normally think of as 360 degrees. So that's your conversion factor. You can simplify it to pi is 180 or a half turn of a circle. So if you're trying to convert between degrees and radians, you just need to times and divide by 180 or pi, whichever way around you're going. So for example, if we have 60 degrees and we want that in radians, then we can divide by 180 and times by pi. That, that fraction there will simplify down to a third. So 60 degrees is the same as a third pi radians, or pi over 3. Because so many angles in degrees will be multiples of pi, um, we quite often leave them as exact values in terms of pi, but you can, of course, convert them to decimals if you're more comfortable with that. Suddenly being introduced to a whole new way of measuring angles might seem a bit bizarre, um, and you might be wondering why we use radians. They're actually incredibly useful for lots of things, including working out a sector area and arc length. And I'm going to show you how the um, formula is really simplified down if we're using radians. So at GCSE you will have seen how to find a sector area. You get the area of the full circle and then times it by the fraction of the circle that you want. So if we put the angle that's at the centre of the sector, in this case theta, and divide by 360, that gives us the fraction of the circle, and then the full area of the circle is pi r squared. If, of course, we, we've got radians instead of degrees, then to use this formula to convert to degrees, we would have to multiply our radians by the scale factor that I showed you before, which we'll say is 180 over pi, the simplest scale factor. So this formula then cancels down pi and pi cancel and 180 and 360 cancel to just give you half theta r squared, or a half r squared theta as it's more commonly seen. And that's a lot simpler and easier to remember, I think, than the old degrees version of the formula. The arc length is even better. Again, if we use the fraction of the circle in degrees and do the full circumference of the circle, that would be 2 pi r. And again, multiply by our scale factor because we're using we're in radians rather than degrees, then all of this stuff will cancel out and the 2 and the 2 will also cancel, leaving you with just r theta. So how easy is that? To find the length of the arc, all you have to do is multiply the radius by the angle r theta. Let's work through an example now. Okay, I've got two examples for you here because I'm so generous. Um, please do pause the video 
and work these out for yourself and come back and compare. Let's do the area of the sector and the arc length for each of these. And just to clarify, the area of the sector for both of them would, would be these wedges and the length is the bit that I've highlighted in blue. So here I've got a, what's called a minor sector when the angle is acute. So that's the, at the arc length would be that little blue bit there. And this is a major sector where it's a reflex angle and so the the length of the arc would be all the way around that distance there. So let's work these out using the new formulas. So this area, a half r squared theta, I've times them together and you can leave it as a exact answer in terms of pi, 32 pi over 5 or if you really want to convert it to a decimal, then you lose some accuracy, but you could give it to three significant figures, 20.1. Um, and this could be in centimetres squared or whatever units you're using. Let's do the arc length now. This one's super easy, just multiply the angle by the radius, which gives you 1.6 pi, or if you're wanting to convert to a decimal, 5.03 centimetres or whatever length you're using. Let's try these ones now. So this one even though it looks different because it's a major sector it works exactly the same way. Um, half r squared theta and r theta multiplied together and I've left those answers as decimals. Well done if you got those right. Let's take a look now at three exam style questions. This question comes up quite a lot in various different guises. You're given a sector with a line cut across to cut it into a triangle and asked to find this little area here, the area A. Um, the angle here is a third pi and the radius of the sector is six. And we're basically gonna go about this by finding the area of the whole sector and taking off the area of the triangle. So how we go at doing that yourself, do pause the video. To find the area of the triangle, you'll need to use um, a half AB sine C, and often in this kind of work, you, you do need to use the sine and the cos rules and the area of a triangle. So I'm gonna label that up to the side here. So now we've got the area of the sector and the area of the triangle. All we need to do is minus one from the other to leave us with this little area that we want, A. Now if you were asked for an exact answer, you could just leave it like that actually, six pi minus nine root three. But um, if you did want a decimal answer to round, then you could do it to three significant figures, 3.26. Second question now, I pinched this from an old past paper but changed it slightly just to show a little bit more of what you can do. Um, first of all we're asked to find, we've got this semi-complicated diagram here, um, and we're asked to find the angle DBC, so that's this little one here. Do pause the video and see if you can do that yourself, but we're going to do that by taking out this triangle and seeing what we've got, we've got all three sides and whenever you've got all three sides of a triangle you can use the cos rule. So I'm going to label that triangle up to the side here. I like to draw the triangle to one side and relabel it in a way that's helpful to me to use the cos rule. So because I want this angle here I call that one big A just to work in my formula. Hopefully you do know the cost rule um, and you can rearrange it to get the angle of the subject. So that's there. If not, you do need to memorise that. Now let's put in what we know and work out the angle A. Okay, so working that through and then undoing the cos at the end to get the angle A is 0 0.943 radians. 
Now we're asked to get the whole area of the entire shape A, B, C, D, E. Um, we've got three separate shapes to add up the areas of to do that. Um, we can do the sector area using the formula that we've seen today. Um, we can get the area of the triangle on the right here using half A, B sine C. And then the triangle on the left, um, the easiest way to do that is probably to find the length AE and the length AB, but we'll do that last. Let's do the sector first. Okay, so the area of the sector is 17.5. I've also worked out the area of the triangle BDC by using a half AB sine C. Um, you can draw that triangle out and relabel it again if, you, if that helps you, um, but for that I got a 15.17. Now to get the area of this little triangle ABE, because it's a right angle triangle I can just use a half times base times height but I do need the base and the height to be able to do that. What we do have in this triangle is the length BE, which is five centimetres, and we can easily work out that angle there. Because we've got these two angles, and that's along a straight line, we can take them away from, well, usually it would be 180, but in this case, because we're working in radians, we'll need to take them away from the, the half turn, which is pi, remember. So the angle there will be pi minus those two angles. When you're working with pi and using decimals, it's good to try and keep a good bit of accuracy, at least three decimal places, before you reach your final answer. Otherwise, you'll lose accuracy as you work. And, and on another note, I, I must just say, if you're doing radians and you're using your calculator, do make sure your calculator is switched on to radian mode, not degree mode. Otherwise, when you do sine or cos of any angles, you'll get the wrong answers. So just make sure that you know how to do that. Okay, I've tried to squeeze in my little diagram, 0.799 for that angle there. And we can use basic trigonometry in this right angle triangle to get EA and AB. So I've used the basic trig there to get those two lengths and I've marked them on the diagram. I'm going to have to clear this to make some room, but now we can go ahead and find the area of that little right angle triangle using a half base times height. And then we can add up all the areas that we found to get the area of the entire shape, 38.9 centimetres squared. Now to find the whole perimeter, that should be relatively straightforward, see if you can have a go. Okay, so I found the length of the arc DE using the um, angle times the radius to get 7 centimetres. And then the whole perimeter is adding up all those lengths around the outside of the shape to get 27.7 centimetres. Brilliant! Well done if you got that right. Now let's look at a third and final exam style question. Okay, I hope you can see this diagram okay. I hope it's big enough and clear enough. It's quite hard to draw. Um, testing my artistic skills. Um, but we've got here a sector and the radius is 6 and the angle is a third pi. We've got a circle inscribed into the sector creating um, the native space, the yellow shaded bit, which is what we're asked to find. Again, this was pinched from a previous exam paper. Um, and I really like this question because it involves a bit of creativity to try and find 
how to go about it. It's a good problem solving exercise. Um, I think it's a particularly good one. So do pause the video, have a little scratch of your head and see if you can come up with any ideas of how to solve it. I will give you a clue if you're struggling to see what to do and that is um, to draw yourself a triangle and the triangle that helps here it might not be obvious but right angle triangles are always good ones so if we go from the center of the circle up to that there we've got a right angle if that's clear and then we can bring that down again so we've got a, a right angle triangle there at the side um, that might not look obvious to you, but it's kind of using the lengths that, which are helpful to us. Um, and you might get a question where that sort of trick is helpful in the future. So just remember this question and keep it up your sleeve as a trick. So I'm going to draw that triangle again to the side so I can label it up. The reason why this triangle is useful is we know this angle here because it'll be half of the angle they've given us, so half of a third pi, which would be pi by 6. This length here is the radius of the red circle, so I'm going to call that, we don't know what it is, but I'm going to call it R. And it might feel like there's so much we don't know in this triangle, but actually we can label this side in terms of r as well and then we can make a, an equation with only one unknown which we can then solve. So the way we're going to label this side of the triangle is because that whole length down to there notice would be th still the radius of this big sector so from the top to the bottom is still the radius of the big sector which we know is 6. So that whole length there would be 6, and we're taking off this distance here, which is the radius of the little circle. So it would actually be 6 minus r. So we've got 6 take away r to leave us with that length there. So because now we have this right angle triangle with only one unknown, we can make ourselves an equation with one unknown and solve it. It's a right angle triangle, so we can use basic trig, um, and I think this one will be using sine. Have a go at doing that yourself. And now solve. Now that we've found the radius of the circle, we can go about finding areas, um, and so we can get the area of the entire sector and the area of the red circle and take them away from each other to leave us with the yellow area that we want. Have a go at doing that. Brilliant, so the shaded area will be 6 pi minus 4 pi leaving us with 2 pi and that's a good one to leave just in exact form in terms of pi. Well done if you're getting that. Do keep practicing. There are lots of different creative kind of problem solving questions in that topic. So do keep practicing and have fun.